So, hi, I'm Melanie Batz, and uh, I'm a software developer at Hobio. Uh, I'm here to talk about introducing life into your designer, thanks to Serious and uh, the Gemog framework. Um, imagine that I have my shiny new DSL up and running, thanks to the Eclipse modeling technologies. And I built a powerful tooling with graphical modelers, textual syntaxes, or any dedicated edi editors to support it. And I can use my model to represent the structure of my system. And I can also represent the behavior of my system. This could take many different forms depending on your domain needs. I can define business processes, I can need orchestrations, I can need functional chains, activities, scenarios. So, what I need next is to see what's going on when my model is executed. I need to simulate my design in some way, and I need to understand how my model goes from step one to step 12. And I need more than just snapshots of my model to understand and analyze its behavior. The purpose is to be able to analyze the behavior of our model to get early verifications and validations of the system, um, and many different kind of domain needs uh, exist, and this kind of uh, different domain needs uh, different kind of, an of analysis, like uh, you can imagine to create software engineering, system engineering, create enterprise architecture, or any kind of scientific modeling. This, this means that we need to provide various analysis, analysis techniques for checking behavioral properties. And what I need is to see my editors being animated directly within my own modeling environment based on the execution traces or simulator results. Consequently, model debugging means that I want to traverse step forward the states reached by my model through the application of an interpreter in order to get an intuitive way to understand how my model is evolving. And I want a kind of stepwise debugging in order to find the cause of a defect but by manually observing and controlling the execution. So using my own editors to debug means that there is no more abstraction gap and so better turnarounds. All this helps me to converge faster towards an acceptable design for my system. To be able to get a comprehensive debugging environment, you need several tools. And uh, it is difficult to develop all these tools from scratch for any new or evolved DSL. So thanks to the work I will present you, you will see that uh, it is not any more painful. Uh, now I will show you how to get your own domain-specific debugger. Uh, the tooling I will present you was developed as a part of the Gemoc ANA project. Uh, the Gemoc research project designed a methodology to bring animation and execution analysis to DSLs. And further, used to, it, can, it can be used also to support behavioral coordination of heterogeneous models. Um, GMOC is also an open international initiative that aims to coordinate and disseminate the research results regarding the support of the coordinated use of various modern languages. And uh, that will lead, in fact, to the concept of globalization of modeling languages. That is the use of multiple modeling languages to support coordinated development of diverse aspects of a system. Um, the GEMOC framework allows to animate many types of EMF-related model editors, like textual editors, like the ones you can develop thanks to, uh, to Xtext, like uh, the classical tree editor generated by EMF, or graphical modeler based on Cyrus. So for the demo, my purpose is to animate the Arduino designer so Arduino Designer is, is a simple HCP application based on Cyrus um, to develop small sketches to program Arduino platforms. The Arduino Designer meta model is, uh, represents the Arduino hardware and the software sketches. So it's just a really simple echo which represents the Arduino language. So now it's time for a small demo. Um, for those who remember, the Arduino designer was uh, the classical demo is usually based on a cat, but uh, this time I will demonstrate Arduino designer, but with no cat, as uh, our purpose is to be able now to simulate the hardware in our designer, so I don't need any more the, the real Arduino platform, and so the cat can just retire. 
So, this is a classical Arduino designer. Um, we have two kinds of representation. The first one is a hardware representation on which you can define which kind of uh, hardware element you are plugging to the hardware board. So here I plug the push button and three LEDs. And uh, the other kind of representation is, uh, th is that to define the software that you want to run on the hardware platform. So here, if we have a look, we have a push button, and if the push button is activated, then we will have some blinking LEDs. Okay, now I create a new perspective in the Hadron designer in order to launch the simulator. I have a new button, which just launched a debug configuration. And when I click on it now, I see that there is something on the stack frame. Um, but you can't see anything inside the representation. That's completely normal. Because when I pause, I could have a look to the different value of the different pins. And I see that holes are equal to zero. Or in order to simulate the, acti to the activation of my push button, I need to put a value, which is for the Arduino platform, it would be kind of something, this value, value like this. And here, you can see if I go step by step, no, I am entering inside the if instruction. And I am inside the repeat, and I'm able to go step by step again. And I will see that now my blue LED is switched on. And I can run like this step by step. And I will see all my LEDs changing accordingly. I'm also able to run. And you will see the, oh, I can see the button in fact. Okay, I have the red points, in fact, that's why. So we are able to, pu to put some breakpoints inside the representation, and so the simulation will stop on breakpoints. If I remove the breakpoint, I'm able not to run the simulation, and you will see that the LEDs are blinking. So I am able to test my software without the real hardware, and that's pretty useful. I will just stop this and go back to the slides. So, mm -hmm. what are the technologies required to bring animation and execution analysis to Arduino Designer? You need to provide two things, an interpreter and an animator. For the previous Arduino Designer demo, we implement two new plugins for the simulator. The Arduino simulator provides the Arduino interpreter, and the Arduino simulator design defines the animator. So to get an executable DSL, uh, we just implement, in fact, a small interpreter. I'm not sure if you can. We implement this, which is a small interpreter in Java. And we define then a new model animator thanks to Cyrus. Uh, a default animator engine is provided by the animation framework. And we just parameterize it thanks to Cyrus. We provide also to configuration, to define the stack frame, what we want to see in the stack frame, and which kind of variables we want to see in the variable view. In the end, to animate the Arduino designer, only a few lines of codes need to be added. Around 1,000 of lines of codes are for the Java interpreter and the really small design file to extend the Cyrus specification to provide animation. So if I look to the interpreter, it is really basic. Uh, the implementation follows the interpreter visitor design pattern. It is, based on, it is based on EMF switch, and depending on the instruction it encounters, it will behave accordingly. So for example, when it encounters a sensor, uh, it will get the value of the pin associated to the sensor and just interpret it as a Boolean. Uh, and as an example, if it encounters a repeat instruction, this will be translated to a for instruction in Java. And each time we are executing the instruction, we delegate to the debugger. The debugger manages the execution flow, so this means that you can have breakpoints and you can suspend the requests. Consequently, if you already have an interpreter for your DSL, 
you will just need to call the debugger control method to support for free all the Eclipse debug feature, all the Eclipse debugger features, and you are able to control the simulation thread. So our debugger extends the abstract DSL debugger class, which is provided by our animation framework we developed during the Jmog project. And we just implement the start method, which launch the, simula which launch the simulation thread, initialize the interpreter, and calls the interpreter loop. Then we implement the update data method in order to update the debug thread stack frame and to set the current instruction. Then we update the variable's value. And we provide also a new series specification model in, in which we can define how the model representations will evolve during the simulation. Then the animator can be an extension of an existing representation as what we do for the Arduino designer, or it can just, you, can just import a new, uh, you can just import an existing representation, or you can create a completely new representation. So in our example, uh, the O-Design customizes the existing representation by just decorating some existing graphical elements. And to do so, we use the representation extension feature provided by Cyrus. And I show you also that we can add some breakpoints. So we contribute also two more actions to get a pop-up menu on the representation in order to be able to launch the debug. But I used during the demo the up button in the toolbar. And you are also, thanks to the pop-up menu, you can, toggle, you can set breakpoints on a selected element. Um, and finally, we define some style customization to highlight activated hardware. You see the yellow box and the current executed instruction, which was the red box. And uh, that's all you need to develop to get a simulator integrated with your own designer. So, no, have a look on what the animation framework we developed bring for free. It encapsulates step over into return in transactions. It provides a bridge between the Eclipse Debug APIs and the EMF APIs. It provides all you, all you need uh, to initialize and run a debug session and all you need to control the execution thread. It also implements a small protocol to transmit events and requests between the application debugger and the Eclipse debug APIs. It provides a mechanism to extend your designer with the simulation feature, and it, give, it gives you so the possibility to manage breakpoints on representation and to get the current instruction. So finally, it provides an echo model to represent the runtime data. And uh, this is an ECRO model. We use um, ECRO to manage the runtime data, and we have only four main concepts. A debug target, a thread, a stack frame, and variables. Um, the debug target represents the running debug session. The thread represents the running debug processes. And the stack frame represents the execution flow. The stack frame keeps also a reference to the current instruction. And an instruction could be any kind of object. The stack frame references also the variables, which represent the elements that can be evaluated for each instruction. And finally, uh, we provide, the framework provides also a launch configuration in order to launch the simulation. And you just need to select the model to animate and the first instruction. This was in, an, in the hardware designer because all of this is uh, developed uh, in the simulator button, in fact. So you can't see the launch configuration as I know which is the model, and so I don't need for this case uh, to show you the launch configuration, uh, but it is exactly the same. So the simulation framework, also developed in the context of Jmog project, supports another kind of interpreter. Uh, in our first example, we implemented the interpreter thanks to Java code. In this second approach, we use care meta and extend to parameterize the generic interpreter and the generic execution engine. With this second approach, uh, the simulation framework provides a generic execution engine, a generic control panel, and a generic timeline. 
So we have some extend code, and the extend code is used only to define the language semantic. As in the previous demonstrated Java interpreter, an aspect is provided to define the behavior of each instruction of the language. For example, when the generic interpreter encounters the sensor, it will get the value of the pin associated to the sensor, but in extend this time. Another example, if it encounters a repeat instruction, this will be translated to a for instruction, but in extend. So thanks to this approach, uh, we can also parameterize the step-by-step -step feature of the debugger by using the add step annotation. And this will allow us to define on which steps we can stop. Uh, for example, if you want to evaluate an if condition, maybe you don't want to stop on each part of the condition, but just you want to see this like stop before the if and be able to stop after the if instruction is evaluated. So this helps the language designer to simplify the debugging workflow. So as a recap, um, this is what we use for the first demo. We have the, the Java interpreter, some configuration, and the model animator. And um, now we implement uh, just the model interpreter thanks to Kermeta and based on Xtend. And we keep the same model animator as in the first demo. Now we have a generic execution engine and the generic debugger which configurate with the generic stack frame configuration and generic variables configuration. More, the simulation framework provides also a small timeline which can represent the execution. In the end, to animate the Arduino designer with the second approach, based on the simulation framework, less lines of codes are needed to be added, around 400 lines of codes for the extend interpreter, and we still use the same small O design file to extend the Cyrus specification to provide animation. So now it's time for the second demo. And uh, this time, so I will demonstrate Arduino designer debugging, so, but based on Kermeta and extend aspects. This is the extend uh, aspects uh, file. So you see that uh, it is a short file, and that's all. All this corresponds to the behavior of uh, the Arduino platform. And so I launch a runtime. Now we are in the Jmog Studio, which uh, is provided by the, the Jmog project, and which integrates all the stuff we developed during the project. So I launched, or I already launched um, the simulation, and you can find again the hardware, fish, the hardware representation and the sketch representation. And you see that this time we have much more things inside the stack frame. You see that we can see which uh, which instruction is the current instruction executed, and we can still see the different variables. Uh, same, I need to change the, um, I just will run first. If I launch this time the simulation, you see that now we have a timeline which represents the execution. If I pause, uh, you see in the purple dot, this is the already executed and finished instruction, and in yellow, the current, thing, the current instruction uh, executed. And we can have a look on which instruction it refers. So this is the if instruction, and in red you can see that the one selected is the if instruction. If I go to the variables in order to update the value to simulate the activation of the push button. And if I relaunch, now you can see something weird in the timeline. We have three yellow dots, so it means that we are three current instructions executed. And that's true as we are in the if, we are in the repeat, and we are currently executing a delay. So the yellow is the first one is the if, the second one is the repeat, and the last one is the delay. And when we will finish the repeat uh, loop, you will see that all the dots will become purple dot. So if I run again, mm -hmm. OK. 
Okay. No. Now we finish the repeat loop, and we still have new yellow dot, which is the new loop of the if and repeat and uh, again. So you can see this with this extend approach, we have a better stack frame, as we can see all the different instructions that are really in execution. And we can have a timeline that allows us also to go back in our execution and to see directly the color of the, the corresponding color. So when we select this, we can see which instruction is associated. And it's selected directly inside the um, representation. We are still able to provide, to provide breakpoints. And um, I will go back to the slide. So based on the simulation framework, the model debugging relies on an execution trace. In fact, in this second approach, the simulation framework provides also a trace manager. And this trace manager allows us to navigate in the trace. And so the execution engine constructs the trace during the execution. The trace manager provides a trace of the different states of the model execution. And the purpose is to allow the debugger to restore the model to a prior state in order to implement a backstepping. This means that we are not able to revert the executed model into a prior state. And so it is possible to go forward during a session, but also to go backward to replay the debug scenario. And it is not a record and replay as we reset the model as it was and we reevaluate the execution from the new point in history. So we rely on an execution trace storing the previous states. Consequently, for a similar model state, we will obtain a similar replay. So this is a small animation. Uh, we are still presenting the backward feature. Uh, here you can see that we are just uh, going uh, forward, like I showed you before. And at some point, we just jump to go backward through all the states of the model here. And then we go back state by value. And uh, this means that when we jump on the pin values, uh, each time we set all the model to the associated state. So if you want more information and more, detail about, more details about the backward begging feature, uh, you can have a look uh, to this talk. Uh, supporting efficient and advanced omniscient debugging for XDSML proposed by uh, Benoit Combemal two weeks ago at SLE. So for details, uh, you can read this. So during the GMO project, we developed another example based on UML activity diagrams. And you can find all the information about this example on the GMO website. And on this example, you can see that we are debugging an activity diagram. We still have the same timeline view here. And uh, here we also develop, a, we define also a specific view which allows us to select manually the next step to go through. So we are able also to add some more specific views. So to sum up, I present you a Pojo animator for my own DSL based on the animation framework. In this case, we just provide an interpreter and uh, an execution engine. So we got quick results, and it was easy to integrate in our designer, and we provide the minimum control on the simulation execution. Next, we worked on an advanced animator based on the simulation framework. In the second approach, we provide an interpreter parameterization with extend and Kermeta. And then we just use the generic execution engine and trust manager. And we got more debug capabilities and the rich execution control with the timeline. Finally, we leveraged the model debugging. And we got, thanks to the trace manager, a shiny backward feature in our debugger. So good news for you. Uh, the framework I demonstrate is available on a new page on the Serious website, which is Serious Lab. And the purpose of this page is to regroup all the generic technologies provided on EPL, which have proven helpful. 
So this technology is looking for an interest to bring it to a full maturity level. So if you are interested, get in touch with us. So what's next for you? Uh, first, you can try the executable Arduino designer by downloading it on my GitHub. <coughs> and then you can read the JMOC publications to get more details. And after, maybe you, can, you want to join us in the JMOC initiative. And finally, feel free to get in touch with us to breathe life into your designer and for your specific DSL. I want to talk a little about the CyrusCon next um, 3rd December. It's in Paris, it's free, and it's one day event all about Cyrus. So come to see us and to meet us. And so thanks for your attention. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate. No, it's a generic concept. Maybe, Yvon, you can... Load it. Other question? No? Okay. So, oh, okay, okay, that's so okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can. Uh, so, on, on what uh, are the animations based? Are they based on like, the uh, dynamic styles um, of uh, the series? In this example, it's a style customization. So, we use uh, the same representation and we just extend it to add style customization in order to make the border red and, uh, um, and uh, to, make, uh, the, to change the image in order to get uh, switching, in order to be able to switch LEDs. Uh. So it's just style customization in this example. But in fact, you can provide any kind of representation and you can provide a completely new representation. So it's what you want and what you can do with Cyrus. I don't really know exactly how they did in the extend uh, framework. I just know that they do something to be able to get uh, generic uh, variables. For the uh, Java interpreter, uh, we I think that Ivan can reply for me. <laughs> yes, uh, the, there was a method, uh, the, the yeah, the I show this method, and we just uh, use this method to update the variables, but. Uh, At the moment, not yet. We do not have an headless mode, uh, as the purpose was to be able to show the animation inside Cyrus. So, <laughs> but yeah. So you sh it should work, but uh, I have no demo. <laughs> With, we use a generic uh, trace manager and a generic uh, trace uh, model. Is that based on the compare? No. <laughs>
this, that's all? Okay. Nobody else? Okay. So thank you. And uh, please evaluate the talk. Do not forget to do it. Thanks.